It's customary to hear a lot of pushback against traditional scrum roles, ceremonies, and outputs. And there's one in particular that a lot of people will excuse their way out of, decide that they don't need it, or that it's too much work. And that's the demo. Let's talk about it. That's this week on the Badass Agile Podcast. Greetings, team. Welcome to the Badass Agile Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Williams. Greetings, everybody. Welcome back. Glad to see you. Thank you for tuning in from wherever you happen to be. You know, the demo is one of those things that over time, teams will, as they're fine-tuning their game, fine-tuning their performance, will decide, you know, we just don't need it. We just shouldn't do it. And the reasons are many, but I have one suggestion about why we absolutely must keep it. Now, first, let's remember why we're here. To create a unique tribe of leaders who truly serve their clients and communities by doing what matters and what works, relentlessly chasing value and excellence like a badass. There's so many resources out there about what you need to do to be agile, but we're focused on who you need to become in order to lead teams. So let's hammer down those fundamentals to create a truly unique and powerful force in this industry. Now, if this helps you, tell your friends about it. And don't forget to join me on Facebook in the Badass Agile Listener Lounge. Every Monday night at 7 p.m. EST, we do a live stream on the latest podcast episodes. Plus, there's tons of other features and bonuses. So come check it out. Links are in the show notes below. And hey, while you're at it, why not check out Badass Agile on YouTube? The podcasts are now in video format with running commentary, and it's just basically a live visual fiesta. So come and see it. Okay. So what about the demo? Why does it exist in Scrum and why does it factor into the Agile philosophy? Well, it should be obvious. If the product is the thing that you're building or making for a customer and you're doing it in small incremental iterative loops, it's helpful to show it to them. It's helpful to show it to them primarily so we can get that critical customer feedback. Have we built the right thing? Are we on the right track? Are these the things that you wanted and expected? Now, over time, we've realized that there are a lot of other reasons why a demo can be beneficial. It helps us see what we're capable of. If nothing else, in terms of productivity or performance or output, it also, in my experience, creates some discipline around releasing things. One area where it's really easy to fudge things is to say, you know, we're not going to really, like we're going to do two-week sprints, but we're not going to put anything into the marketplace for six months. That, in theory, defers or breaks some of the benefits that you can get from using Agile Scrum in the first place. So forcing the delivery, however good, bad, or indifferent, however small or large the thing that you deliver is, just creates a little bit of discipline and culture around shipping. And in so doing, helps the team understand what shippable and valuable actually means. Especially in larger organizations, there's bound to be tons of dependencies and tons of things that have to get done for something to be released to the customer base in the marketplace. And oftentimes, we don't even have a clue what those are until we get out there and start trying to ship things on a dependable cadence. Another benefit is that some people just work better to a deadline. So however arbitrary it might feel, that little push can really help some teams get their stuff together get productive, get serious about testing for quality, and somehow, by miracle of miracles, pull it off every two weeks or so. There's a whole host of benefits, I suppose we could keep on naming them, but let's talk about why sometimes we don't demo. First of all, there's a ton of overhead. The overhead of preparing and coordinating and orchestrating all the moving parts for release, including all of the dependent tasks and everything that's included in definition of done, can be time-consuming. In some teams, it gets ugly, where prepping for demo takes up 30, 40, 50% of the team's productive time in a cycle. It is no doubt stressful. So the shadow half of having a deadline is that deadline creates pressure, creates stress, and for some people, creates anxiety. Sometimes we drop it because people stop caring. You know, in the beginning, everyone's showing up, all the stakeholders, they put on their, their Tuesday best or whatever. And they walk into the team room and they ooh and awe and applaud and ask questions. And then after a while, 
they start declining. The numbers go down. People don't show up, so there's a sense that maybe they don't care. Sometimes the product isn't software, so it's harder to make a case that there's anything to show in the first place. And then there's the classic reason that, well, we don't really ship anything to production to the public every two weeks, so why do we really need to demo? Well, here's one compelling reason that I want you to consider about why demoing is such a critical part. A demo allows us to see what's possible. The demo can be one of the most inspiring parts of working with agility. Why? Because this is where you get to see things that sometimes we have a hard time visualizing. Until it's in our hands, until we can touch it and feel it, we don't know what questions to ask. We don't know where to look for inspiration. We don't know how to be innovative. We don't know how to rethink what the customer might want or truly need. And in my experience, sometimes when we demo, not only do customers get excited about what they might be able to build, what could come next, but they get so excited and amped up about how the team looks. How does it feel to be in a real team room where people are pushing the boundaries of what they're capable of? How does it feel to be in a team room where the energy and pride and accomplishment is palpable? How does it feel to be in a team room where all of the members seem to be invested, acting like owners, showing you how to push the buttons that you yourself dreamed up? I mean, that's inspiring. That was the thing we never got to see when we were working in waterfall ways. But there's something about the human condition that until we've seen, an electric car, or a smartphone. It's impossible for us to visualize what it looks like. But once you've seen it, now you start thinking about all the things you could do with it and all of the things that could come next. Not only do you ask what's next, but you ask what else. And if you think about it, those are the real questions of innovation and evolution. So I make the case that every chance you get, you should demo. I'm a huge proponent of adapting the process, of molding it so that it fits the customer, fits the environment, and fits the team. But I'm not a proponent of doing that to the point where we miss a great opportunity to harness some serious firepower. And when you put a product in a customer's hands and they get excited and they begin to see the future, that's explosive. Guys, give it a think and let me know what you come up with. You can reach out at badassagile.com or find me on Twitter at badass underscore agile. I'm grateful for you. I look forward to seeing you next time. And until then, stay badass. Badass.